All right, we are back. Sega Doggo here. We are going through and continuing the 100% practice walkthrough I'm doing. One note I want to make mentioned last episode about the Pyromancy Tome. So the only one we are missing is in the boss Wolnir fight. And for that, you just go into the boss fight and it's a glowing item before the boss fight really begins. And if you do miss that, not a big deal. It's still in the boss room. I'll mention it later and we'll go grab that. But for now, we're going to continue progressing through this area. So we're going back to where that giant rat was. We're going to go ahead and drop attack that, grab some items. But this is the run back to get to the progression route, which allows you to go up and turn that ballista off that's messing you up in the smoldering lake. So you just come right here and then you just sprint right for the stairs. You're probably going to take fireball to the back, but if you move fast enough, you can usually avoid it. You're going to hit with a bunch of fireballs here. Uh, rolling can help you avoid most of them, but you'll usually catch one or two. So kill this rat. Come into this room, kill three more rats. There's one who already booped me. There's these two. Oh, okay. So come through where we boop the uh, the invisible wall. You come over here. If you stand around long enough, those guys in that central room that we killed last episode will attack you. So just bear that in mind. And there's the giant rat, and we are going to plunge attack it. So you will kill it with one plunge almost always, but regardless, you want to run away because there's a whole horde of little rats that are going to follow you. Just fight, walk around here, fight them on the stairs. It just separates them a little bit. So that instead of you possibly getting surrounded by eight or nine rats, you can just kind of kill them in sequence. Okay, so... I think that was seven, so about seven rats down here, so you got to watch out for that. You don't want to run up on them because seven rats plus a big rat, kind of annoying. So, okay, I actually left the game in online mode, so I'm going to go ahead and put that back to offline mode just for the purpose of this walkthrough so I don't get distracted by an invasion. But if you are playing in online mode, this is the perk. You'll have notes that point out things like the invisible wall right here. Now, occasionally the notes will try to get you to jump off a cliff and stuff like that, but in general, they're really helpful and they help you uh, avoid missing stuff like invisible walls. Go ahead, double invisible wall visible wall here chest and then another invisible wall you don't want to drop on down you got another catalyst right here the Isolus staff so this whole area is filled with curse frogs if you play Dark Souls 1 you oh boy so they breathe the curse fog and I now have to run because he hit me with curse I was gonna try to talk through this a little bit but grab the Titanite scale only item back here and then you just want to sprint past them all you're gonna go right up these stairs Typically, one frog at least will follow you. You just want to come up to the top of the stairs. Don't run across that bridge. Just wait here. See if a frog is following you. Just give it a second. It's looking like we didn't get followed by any. That's nice. So now we have what I would consider to be the toughest NPC encounter in the game. That is Night Slayer Torsig. We already fought him when he was a version that did less damage and had less health. So he is right around this corner. Come around here. He's typically waiting at the bottom of the stairs, though he can come up the stairs to meet you kind of at the top. There he is. And he did it this time. As always, he has a very mean sword. So what you're going to want to do is there's a Black Knight across on the other side of the bridge. You can get Torsig and the Black Knights to fight each other. So what you just want to do is kind of pull him along. And as long as he's following you, just sprint to the end of the bridge, and this black knight right here is going to charge you. And you just roll past him, and you let those two fight it out. As you can see, they're going to start fighting. Now, Torsig usually torches this black knight. But, most importantly, it can allow you to take some serious health off of Torsig. As you can see, we already have him basically down to nothing, which just allows us to kill him in a couple of hits. So it's just a useful tactic for it. An added perk is if you can get them to fight each other. Oh, okay, make sure you grab this item. If you get them to fight each other on this bridge, usually one or sometimes both of them will fall into that lava, and then, of course, they die. If that happens, you just go ahead, 
and you just quit out the game so you just quit game reload your save and the items will be waiting for you on the bridge so you can still get the fume and the door shield so down in the lava right here two more items see them both we're gonna come back for those we will do a lava run I think that lava runs easier than the other one I showed you just be aware of that then we have a very long ladder that's gonna take us up to where the ballista is very long ladder okay take this second ladder up and as soon as you get to the top you're gonna to want to drop off to the right you might have seen the glow a little bit but there is an item right there dragon rider bow that is the best build or that is the best bow for a quality build so we can use that right now and it's just a great bow does great damage and if you have a quality build it should be your default bow just because it does enough damage to really take anything you'd want to use a bow for out pretty quickly oh okay I did not explain this area I'm sorry I will wait and explain what's ahead so the ballista can shoot you as you go ahead we're gonna come out here we're gonna drop down to the left because if you don't the ballista is gonna mess you up pretty good we're gonna come into a little alley and deal with three skeletons the uh, wheel skeleton guys that we dealt with earlier so you're gonna want to come out here you can see we're protected by the tree right now the ballista is just past there you can kind of see it if you squint you're going to want to run to the left use this broken down wall right here as a shield as you can see it is very much shooting at us go ahead jump on down and we are safe once again we are protected by this nice little wall right here if you turn around there's an item you might get hit grabbing it but i'm going for it anyway grab the homeward bones just roll on away and you're good this next part little bit rough just because there are three of the wheel skeletons but you can usually get just one or two of them to come towards you and then uh oh there we go now we got two of them there's one more I still say these guys are not very scary if you play Dark Souls 1 they are extremely scary Regardless, if you are having a tough time, a 100% physical shield will just be the best thing ever. And I think this guy probably dropped his shield. Yep, the bone wheel shield. So I'm going to demonstrate that real quick. It's a very fun shield to use. Okay. All right, I never explained this before, but if when you're carrying your weapon, one hand shield, one hand sword. If you just tap Y or triangle, you will two hand the weapon on the right which is the right d-pad and in the bottom left it's on the right side but if you're one-handing both and then you hold, oh and you are holding Y you will two-hand the shield which is really cool especially if you're wielding a weapon in either hand it can really provide you with some good mix-ups so for this if you weapon art as you can see it spins it which is very fun so just kind of a fun shield I wouldn't say that it's powerful but I would definitely say that it's a fun shield to use and maybe if you get really experienced with the game you want to have a gimmick or a challenge build it's a good one okay so now we have two more of the tough skeleton enemies up ahead you for the life you don't want to fight them both at once you will just die I've died here probably three times just going through regular playthroughs they do a lot of damage so you just want to make sure that you pull one at a time for this make sure you're full health before you go there's nothing really you have left to need like your Estus 4 because right there as you can see the triple layer ballista we're already there like we made it we just, if we kill these two guys we'll get to turn the ballista off and we will get all of those sweet sweet items that are in it okay so he is coming just gonna want to walk him back here and perseverance is going to be your best friend in this fight so perseverance and then stagger lock that guy and we didn't quite kill him but you use perseverance again and we kill him as you can see perseverance just lets you not even have to worry about the damage as always give him a second these guys don't get back up 
but always make sure that you give it a few seconds just in case I am never trusting of skeletons in this game they get up pretty inconsistently in my experience so then you gotta deal with the other one heal up gonna go into the fight full health come here buddy hey perseverance through it stagger lock in and you're not going to be able to one shot him if you have the exact same stats and weapon as me but five hits and they're dead drop some titanite heal back on up so this is the spinning thing controlling the ballista just come over here push the lever and congratulations the ballista is over so now that we've turned off the ballista we're going to go fight Horus which is, I mean, I wouldn't say it's the most emotional part in the game, but it, it's definitely a sad thing. So Horus has turned hollow, and that's why he is no longer with Henri. But we're going to drop on down. It's the fastest way back. But because we don't have the Silver Cat Ring, you're going to want to just take off all your armor. And that way you won't take a whole lot of damage. You see, not too much damage. And then... You just continue dropping on down to the next level. Drop on down. I always feel like there's an item here. There is not, and it's always depressing. So, once you've dropped all the way down, go ahead, throw your armor back on. I did some more research prep for this. Walk through. And I am forgetting <laughs> where I put my armor, but it's fine. I'm just going to double check that I don't have any better armor. I do not. So, we're just going to continue. We're going to go deal with Horus. So, there's a couple of crystal lizards in here. So, you just want to take this. If you come down to the first bonfire that allows you to get into the smoldering lake, just stick to the right side and you will find this. Or you just drop on down like I have. Now... Crystal Lizard number one, stick to its left side, run into the wall. Get you some twinkling, and then up ahead, you have a second Crystal Lizard. This guy really likes to get away from me. So stick to his left side, and he has disappeared off the map. And he fell off, which means we should get his item in just a couple of seconds. That's kind of unfair. There you go, Titanite Chunk. Okay. Sometimes they do that, but in this game, if you fall off an edge, you die. Or if the Crystal Lizards do, I should say, then you're good to go. So, we are at 13 minutes. We have just enough time to go ahead and kill Horus. Horus does not do very much damage. You should not be afraid of him. I like to try to parry him just to give him the honor of being parried. But I usually mess it up. Oof. Horus, I'm sorry. I messed up your parry. No honor for you. Oh. Uh, there it is. Nice little repost for you, Horus. I am sorry. Wish I had the Hornet Ring to put on so at least I could do a creative. If you have any trouble, just use Perseverance and he will obviously not stagger you and you could see did not take very many hits to knock him out so the Leywind shield just so you know the Leywind shield that's my personal favorite shield in this game that is typically the shield that I will make a blessed shield so it serves the same role as the red white shield but obviously has better stats across the board and that's typically the shield that I will use with my characters so I will upgrade that um, as you can see getting this item is a nightmare I button mash A and just run at it and eventually I will get it. So from here, just go ahead and use a homeward bone to get out of there. And we're going to take on the that electric snake in the next episode. So not too long. So just go ahead on back to the last bonfire. If you're really worried about your souls, feel free to go back and level up. But we're going to start at the same bonfire as before for the next episode. And we're going to go ahead and take out that worm. But yeah. So that's the end of this episode, and thanks for watching.